Hello and welcome to This is Metal with Tom Collier. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston. We've got the entire band, the Atomic Kings here. Um, I previously interviewed the lead singer, Ken Brock. Ken, it's great to uh, be talking again. Now we got the whole entire band now. Now, Tom, share with me because these guys have had their debut album for a while. How did they come um, to work with uh, Fire Rock Music Group? How did uh, they um, come, come to work with you guys? So our we lost A&R the band. Guy, <laughs> yeah, Mike Wilkerson reached out to us. Our A&R guy reached out to us and uh, reached out to them. And then he sent their stuff over to me. And so we we worked a deal with their current record label to like partner with it. We wanted to make sure they get out, get out in physical worldwide. You know, these guys, if you listen to their album, it's kick ass. I mean, there's not one filler song on that. When I heard it, I listened to the whole album. I said, "Yeah, we let's try to try to do something with these guys. They absolutely do the best we can for them." Yeah, and you know, let Appreciate me ask you guys because you know the album has been out a while, getting great reviews. Um, and, and Tom explained to me, um, you know, off the air that part of the reason they kept um, you guys got involved with Fire Rock Music because they can help you a little more with the distribution as far as getting it in more places. So that's a great thing, but. Um, Talk a little bit about how, how great that feels. Your debut release to get such rave reviews and it's selling so well. And it's, this is, you know, a little independent band. We were very unhappy about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's great. It's, it's great that people are responding so well to it, you know, right off the, right out of the gate really. And um, yeah, we couldn't be, uh, couldn't be happier about that. That's for sure. It's yeah. You know, one of the things I interviewed Ken a few months ago um, that we talked about is of course, um, Anytime, you know, you hear about the Atomic Kings, you know, it's got that little tag featuring X Badlands basis. And what's that like for you, Greg? Because I, I know you, when you were in Badlands, you kind of experienced that as one of the other band members, like featuring X, X Ozzy guitarist J.P. Lee. But I, I bring this up because that's not the only reason this album is selling. Like Tom said, it's just a small fraction, if you know what I mean. It's the entire band, the songwriting. The whole album is just killer from top to bottom. Well, I mean... I was in Badlands. That's that's the yeah, best yeah. I could tell you. I mean, and I bring that resume to whatever it is I do, and yeah. in this case, the Comic Kings. But I mean, that's about as far as it it goes. I mean, uh, my writing style is similar to what we kind of did in Badlands. Yeah. But yeah. it was that way before. Sure. I mean, it's always sure. been that way. It's not something that I came up with, you know, because of that. Yeah. And you know. Uh, we all contribute to the writing process. Sure. Ryan and I might come up with the original ideas, but we all put our mark on it. So it's very much a band situation as opposed to Greg, the guy from Badlands, writes that's everything what, what and he saying, tells you know, everyone what to do. And That's what I'm saying. You know, people really need to give the album a chance and they, they have that. Um, anyone hasn't heard it because from top to bottom, when I listen <laughs> to it, there's not a bad song on the album. And the songwriting is what really stands out. And when I talked to Ken, he was sharing with me well, one thing when he first, um, you know, joined the band, you all came together. He says that was a thing that was really immediate, the, the chemistry and the and how well you guys all work together. Mm -hmm. We're trying to ruin that right now as we speak. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it really was. A, you know what? I, I think everybody, you know, like we talked about in the past, everybody is is pretty like minded as far as what, what we wanted to do, what we wanted to create and. And it's it's kind of rare to get four guys together that are, you know, a little different than everything that's going on out there. So it it, it kind of came together that way. We all had the same idea of what we wanted to do at this point. Okay, so Ken, you're you're a singer. Greg is um, a bass player, and Ryan, are, are you the um, are you the bass? Are you the guitar player or the drummer? He's our cheerleader. I'm the I'm the he's, high, I'm he's the high man. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I play the bagpipes. No, I'm play I I'm the guitar player. And uh, I do hey, some hey, keyboards. Jimmy here, my stepson Jimmy is the drummer. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so. Red -headed tips. <laughs> wow. So, so Ryan, how, how talk about some of your guitar heroes growing up? You know, how how old were you when you first picked up the guitar? You mean I was guitar I was uh, twelve, I think, when I first started. 13, 12 or thirteen. But I grew I grew up listening to the usual suspects that like a nine year old would like, uh, yeah. given you know, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, I did listen to I See Kiss on the back of your wall over there. I, I listened to them. I listened to ACDC. Um, I listened to Ozzy Osbourne. So just those three bands alone are very kind of different guitar players. Uh, yeah. As I got older and I actually started actually playing the instrument, you know, you find that you 
you your um, horizons kind of broaden, right? So it, like you you get all these other different influences. So I d go back and I listen to guys like Jimmy Page or, or Hendrix, um, but I'm a big fan of other lesser known like a like a Robin Trower. Sure, um, sure. I, I really dug a lot when I first heard him and like a Frank Marino. Um, Doug Finkelstein. And, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> big fan. I got all of his record. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're they're all, <laughs> so I'm kind of all over the map, and I studied all kinds of genres too, like jazz, and um, I play a lot of blues mm -hmm. and jazz and soul music and R and B and all kinds of different things. So all of that gets kind of thrown into one big pot of gumbo, and, it, and uh, it makes sense. I can kind of hear those influences in the music. So um, um, and it makes I think when you play different types of music, you're influenced by different types of stuff. It not mm -hmm. only makes you more um, rounded musician but a more prolific writer you know yeah absolutely you know i used to read articles of these guitar players like robin trower for example where he tries to write guitar riffs that sound like horn section so like you know some kind of soul r&b horn section from the 60s which didn't make sense to me when i was 15 but it makes sense to me now because like where they put those stabs those horn stabs in things and how syncopated the rhythm of it is so it's not just where your hands are, what chords you're, what scales you're doing is the rhythm of it. And so I consider myself like, like to me, rhythm is very important. So like you could get rhythm from just about any instrument, right? You so see him dance. Uh, I can't dance, but uh, I can play good rhythms on the guitar. <laughs> yeah, let, let me ask you, Greg. Hey, Greg, how tight is the rhythm section in this band, you know? I'm going to tell you a little something about Ryan here, too. Uh, Ryan came as Ryan went and saw Badlands. I just found this out like this year. Wow. Ryan was telling me that he had went and actually seen Badlands at a show in like 1989 or 90. Yeah. And I was uh, three years old. Yeah. <laughs> so, Ryan, let me ask you about that. Going from being a fan of Greg's, you know, seeing him in his um, previous band, um, what's it like to be up there on the stage with the guy? And, and, and here's the even better question um when you went to audition or how you joined the band did you know right away that's who this guy was um well first of all fans a strong word okay <laughs> he doesn't actually like him <laughs> tell everyone how much you really like him no i i of course uh had a big uh respect for greg and his work in badlands so who didn't love that if yeah. you're someone of my age of course you know you had those records so um when i met greg for the first time yeah i was aware that he was greg from badlands yeah. and um you know i wouldn't i think it was just like somebody that i respected as a musician more than just like oh my gosh you know yeah. um and then later i think he had seen me play in my band and so that's how we connected is that he kind of reached out and it's like i'm looking for someone that's got that 70s quality a blonde uh, yeah. a blonde yeah. 70s guitar player so i was the only guy in town phoenix is kind of small so there's <laughs> just me He's the only blonde in phoenix <laughs> yeah. Well, you know they say about blondes have more fun, right? Yes. <laughs> Not since he's been in a band with Not... me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tom, um, uh, rather than me do all the talk, you know, I'm going to throw it to you, Tom. You have uh, you have a few questions for the guys? I do. One thing I really enjoy about you guys is that you can tell you generally like each other. You get along. You joke around. All the guys in my band are the same way. You know, we don't bicker and stuff. And it's really cool to see the camaraderie between you guys and what. What, are you guys going to be doing any live shows? We haven't talked about that. I mean, we got any live shows coming up? We're in the middle of the writing process at the moment. So we actually just kind of pulled out of a live show that was going to kind of come up here too quick. And because it's in Phoenix, we wanted to be able to debut some new material. And we're just not ready to do that yet. So we're writing for record number two here. And uh, when we get that kind of where we want it, we'll start thinking about live shows we plan to record sometime this year um, we play every march uh the first weekend of march they have a street fair outside of my store here and we set up up in the parking lot and play for free and so unless something unless there's a reformed zeppelin show that we can open or something <laughs> uh, hendrix comes back for the grave kiss i, I want to be at the opening act on the kiss uh, avatar. Avatar, 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 avatar thing. And so we're creating we get, our we own avatar. If we get that avatar tour, we would do that. But uh, probably the next time we'll actually play a live show, unless something really interesting comes about, is probably the first weekend of March out here in front of the store. There's usually several thousand people 
at the event out here and we managed to stop and annoy a couple thousand of them while they're walking by or standing there watching us. <laughs> and we'll probably be able to debut, Ryan and I were talking today, Ryan works with me in the store. So Ryan has the double misfortune of being in a band with me and working, <laughs> work, being my employee here in the store. Hold yourself together. So we'll probably play a half a dozen new songs that we probably have never played. We have some material that we're working on that we're just trying to see how everything goes. We have the first record is a great record, you know. Even that's just my opinion anyway. We're I'm happy with the record, so are they. And we want to make sure that record number two doesn't have the sophomore the sophomore jinx. So we want to really be cognizant of putting together a really great record, and uh, the songs are as strong and that it is at least as good, if not better, than what we did on the uh, debut record. Because like I said, the debut record kind of stands on its own. We sure. have never seen. Other than Ken saying bad stuff about it, we've never seen a negative review. <laughs> we have, you know, we actually, we actually have a lot of things that that we got excited about with with the first one, and I think we have a lot of things we want to say on on the second one as well. I know, for me personally, there's a lot of things that I that I really want to do that that didn't come out the way I wanted on the first one. I'm happy with it, but you know, that second one, you always. We're you always want to go another that. step, you know. Any songs that didn't make the first album that you may revisit? Uh, no. We, thought about it. But we talked about maybe re redoing the bonus track, but writing material isn't a problem for us. Ryan is always writing, and so am I. I'm kind of a riff machine. Yeah. So we always have things that we are interested in, and rather than kind of go back and revisit that or some other song that we did before, I think... I would just really want to focus on stuff that we haven't done, ideas we haven't used, and that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, uh, well, you know, and, and I think, too, maybe you guys are smart because already working towards album number two, by the time that does come out and you uh, do do some live shows, you'll have more songs to play, but then, but then the um, hard thing is, you know, creating the set list and what songs, you know, what songs do you play and what songs do you leave out? <laughs> Well, there could be yeah. much worse problems to have. Yeah, that's that's not a bad problem. <laughs> and, and I'm it. Um, I mean, there's some there's stuff off the first record. Obviously, all you know, all I want and live and take my hand. Some of that stuff will always be in our set. Um, but there's already songs that we've played that we kind of second guessed a little bit and thought, you know, when we have more material, this yeah, would probably yeah. be replaced in the set. And it's just sometimes you have songs that are sound really good on the record and they don't really translate as well live and and that happens to you know i was talking to ryan today deep purple on machine head uh one of my favorite song on that record is uh pictures of home and they played it live like three times and it just never went yeah. over live and yeah. so if we start feeling that way about some of our material and i think we probably do uh, on a track here and there it's not that we don't like it yeah yeah. Just, yeah there's probably something better i mean ryan and i have have been writing pretty much nonstop since this record came out. So I'm pretty sure we're going to have material that we're really going to want people to hear and, and that we're proud of. Yeah, so we, we, we talked to Ken today, we talked to Greg, and we talked to Ryan. Who's who's the quiet member in the band? <laughs> that, that'd be me. <laughs> you guys go ahead. I got to do something. Yeah. Tell him, the quiet tell guy? You yeah, you, you. I, I just, I guess, introduce yourself. We're kind of, so well, he, know he's actually are. the loudest guy in the band. <laughs> that his, is his instrument is the loudest. Yes. Uh, Jimmy, drummer? Yep. That's me. The drummers usually are, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let me let me ask you, Jimmy, as far as drummers when you were growing up, who are, who are your heroes? Boy, that's, uh, there's so many. Uh, the drummer so in the like, Partridge family. He was awesome. Yes, and he was. Uh, Mickey Dolan's. Oh. <laughs> monkeys, monkeys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> They're writing a thing. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the the, the guy who got me interested Started, in playing uh, drums was Peter Chris when I went to see Kiss for the first wow. time. There he is, right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Guess he's getting some honorable mentions. Today. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, I was actually playing guitar. At, yeah. Then I went to see that show and thought, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that. What yeah. that guy does. And, you know what uh, you figure it out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, now, um, great. Um, if I'm not mistaken, um, your brother is also uh, 
Kenny Chasen, who who is in heel, is is that not correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And my other brother is Todd Chasen, who played in Tough. Okay, and so I was curious. I was always curious about that. Um, being brothers that are musicians, uh, did you guys ever like want to be in a band together? Did you ever? Uh, were you ever in a band together? We actually don't like each other, so. <laughs> the double bass well it would have been that uh remember spinal tap when they all played bass i mean they all play bass i mean <laughs> um, i mean i'm i'm really i'm really close with them i i kind of got kenny started when he graduated from high school i gave him a bass he's 10 years younger than i am so uh -huh. i gave him a bass my parents were very thrilled yeah and uh <laughs> and then todd was one of those kind of guys that used to dress up like kiss and put on shows in people's garages okay. with like fake guitars and then eventually he became an actual musician wow. we're both really good bass players and like i always say you know most people get to be the best bass player in their family at, at my house it's a fight <laughs> there you go yeah 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 um you know and, and that could usually go one of two ways i mean you could either be in a band with your brother like the van halens and you know just love each other and have that bond or you could be like the guys in the Black Crows and just have that love-hate thing going constantly. No, nah, me and my brothers get along good. And, I mean, we're probably not ever going to be in a band together at this yeah, point. Yeah. Todd lives in Cleveland, and Kenny, you know, he's he's got his own – he's an electrician, so he's got his own thing, and he plays a little bass now and then. But, you know, probably isn't going to be in the competitive music business anytime soon. And how proud of you as a brother are you of those guys? I mean, it must be pretty cool when you guys go to check each other out, you know, playing live when you guys all do a show. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, back in the day when Kenny was in Keel, I would go. I actually hooked him up to be in Keel because I'd been in Steeler with Ron. And then Todd, you know, I've seen him play a few times. And like I said, they're both excellent bass players. And, and you know, I'm proud, um, I'm proud of them. Another thing people may not know about you, Greg, um, I, I heard you talk about on a, um, an older interview where you talked about um, when you were first starting out, you know, in the music business, one of the things you did was um, you were a bodyguard for a rat. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I had been a bodyguard for a number of different people. Okay. But yeah. One of the guys I was a bodyguard for was Bobby Blotzer from Rat. He actually, basically as a bodyguard in those yeah. days in yeah. LA, you're kind of just, uh, they go out and party and then they, you make sure that if they, <laughs> they, if, they, uh, if they over, over inebriated, you just make sure they get in the car and get home okay. Hey, you, hear, you, hear, you hear about Rat, you know, they're they're famous for their infighting. Was that going on back then, too? I'm sure it was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Robin Crosby was my first friend in L.A., so, wow. I mean, I already knew Robin, and, and the reason, way I kind of met those guys is I had auditioned for Rat, got the gig, and blah, blah, blah. And then through that, you know, Bobby knew my background, and so he said, hey, you know, they – Stephen had a bodyguard, and and Bobby decided he wanted to have one too. And okay. Bobby went. Bobby was the guy that went out a lot, and so he just okay. wanted to have a guy there to watch his back. That's and, cool. That's uh, cool. So yeah. I did that. And and I bring that up because you know um, you hear you hear a lot of stories when people are starting out in the music industry and doing stuff like that, and people don't realize it's a it's a great way to make connections. I mean, I heard you know Robbie Crane before he was over in Vince Neil's band, or anybody really knew who he was. Um, one of the first things he did was um, he was Bobby Dahl's bass tech, you know. So that's that's cool when your guys kind of getting their start in the industry doing these other things. Uh, you know, I mean, to me it was just a job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I got other jobs, other security jobs through that, but in the end, I decided that I would rather be known as a musician than, yeah, you know, a guy that you hire to, you know, watch your back. Guy you hire to beat up musicians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the last He's thing still I a bodyguard. To ask Greg about is you mentioned a couple times that you're in your store. Do you have a music store or something? Uh, I run this store that we're in right now, Bizarre Guitar and Drum. It's here in Phoenix, and uh, it's been around since '76. We rehearse in the back here, and we're actually going to rehearse tonight for a little bit. And uh, you know, this kind of keeps me uh, informed on what's going on. Like it allows me to have Brian work here with me. I don't pay him or anything, but you know he gets to hang around with me, and that's payment enough. That's payment enough. <laughs> Punishment. I mean, payment enough. Yes, that's payment enough. <laughs> so, Tom, before we wrap the show today, because we're getting ready to run out of time, I'm going to throw it to you one last time. If you want to ask any of the guys anything, sure. So, I want to get right before we do the release. I've got some record uh, radio stations. I want to get you guys on, but I'm going to need some wave files from you. Is, would I get that from you or Jason? 
Jason might have that readily available, or do we have it? I, 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 I believe I we you have it. Well. it okay, if you could Dropbox that to me, that would be great. But I got some radio stations that have agreed to play you guys. I've talked to today. Great. I've got five good ones, and one I'm going to. One of the biggest stations in New York is called K Rock. I'm gonna. You got to. You're gonna have to mail them a CD. The DJ will not play digital. I'll get you guys the information right before we release it. He'll do a lot of stuff. K Rock is a big hitter. When they play something, it, it charts. Believe it or not, that's how big they are. They're the biggest station in New York. Fantastic. The DJ loves me. We're good friends. I just want to get you guys some promotion like that, too. Thank you. Love it. Well, Love we'll it. be more than happy to send them a CD. Absolutely. Just let me know what we need to do. Or like Absolutely. Andrew, whoever. And once again, Tom and I would love to thank the entire band for coming on This Is Metal Day. We just want to uh, leave a show saying you guys are welcome back um, anytime. Do you know how rare it is to get an entire band to do an interview? Usually you get one or two guys that do all the talking. So. We love it anytime we get the entire band on. So again, just uh, you're always welcome back. So uh, next, when the album ready to drop, we'd love to have you back on here. Okay, absolutely. Sounds, good. Sounds absolutely. great. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.